Good morning, everyone. My name is Yazuli Abdullahi, and I stand before you to present our research titled Data Post Processing Approach to Enhance AI Bored Modeling of BDO, BOD, which is Biological Oxygen Demand. First, I will start with introduction. Biological oxygen demand is an approximate measure of the amount of biochemical degraded organic matter present in water sample. It is defined by Dogan et al. 2009 as the amount of oxygen required for aerobic microorganisms present in the sample to oxidize the organic matter to a stable organic form. According to Singh 2009, the BOD of any aquatic system is the foremost parameter needed for the assessment of the water quality as well as development of some strategies for the protection of water resources. Apart from complexity and non linearity of aquatic environment, high cost of water quality monitoring often cause serious issues for water quality modeling. Hence, application of artificial intelligence has been employed recently in different hydro-environmental studies. Based on the studies conducted related to the application of artificial intelligence in the prediction or in the modeling of BOD, some of the studies here are presented, like that of Dogan et al. 2009, Junfai and Han 2014, Nurang et al. 2018, to mention a few. Next is we go to the objective of the study. The objectives of the study are first to apply three artificial intelligence and a multiple linear regression techniques for BOD modeling. But as BOD contains both non-linear and linear pattern, so neither the artificial intelligence nor the multiple linear regression could be sufficient for modeling BOD. As a result, we proposed a method called data post-processing approach whereby it combines the output of the single models already applied. And also in this study, we investigated the effect of that uh, data post-processing approach with limited input and when we have limited input two and when we have large number of inputs, like four inputs. So the study location is Udi Chamba Station which is a tributary river to the larger Yamuna River located in India. 21 years data from 1995 to 2015 were used, including dissolved oxygen, fecal coliform, pH, ammonia, and water temperature. Determination coefficient, R square and root mean square error, RNFC, are the performance evaluation criteria we employed in this study. With R square close to 1 and RMC close to 0, this implies a good performance of a model. So the applied techniques in this study, the three artificial intelligence methods, models are the artificial neural network, adaptive neuropathy inference system, support vector regression, and then the linear multiple regression, multiple linear regression. So these are the four models employed for the single modeling, for the first step of the modeling before we go for the uh, proposed methodology we have. The developed models. Based on the obtained results of the applied correlation matrix, three models were developed. BOD, being the dependent variable, is used as a function of DO, NH3, and FC for the first model. The BOD here, you can see there is a subscript at the top there, which implies the number of the model. That is the BOD for model 1, for model 2, and model 3, and their respective number of inputs there. The data post-processing approach employed in this study is called the non-linear ensemble. And the BOD, that is the, the output obtained by BOD non-linear regression, uh, non-linear ensemble, is used as a function of the output we obtained from the single modeling of ANN, ANPIS, SBR, and MLR. The figure also below is showing the 
uh, methodology of the nonlinear ensemble model. We have four inputs here, as we can see. We have five hidden number of hidden layer neurons, and we have an output BOD. Then this is the general procedure of the proposed methodology we have in this study. After collection of the data, then we really process the data. Then we perform the modeling of ANN, ANPIS, and SBR, SBR and LRR. And all of them, the ANN with the sub, uh, one subscript there means the ANN output produced due to the application of ANN model, same as ANPIS, SBR, and MLR. So these four outputs we obtain are then processed as data post processing modeling in form of nonlinear ensemble modeling. And you can see we have three like groups of nonlinear ensemble models here, NLE1, NLE2, and NLE3. Those are also equivalent to the uh, single modeling we have from the first place. Because we have different kinds of input combination in three uh, in three categories. So the ensemble model also is made based on that. Then after that, the results we obtain from the nonlinear ensemble models and that we obtain from the output of the single models, we compare them and see their performance. And then finally, we conclude. So this is the results of the single models we perform. From the left, you can see the model number, which we have M1 up to M3. And we have the technique applied, ANN, ANPIS, SBR, and MLR. Then we have the input. For model one, we have three inputs. Model two, we have four inputs. And model three, we have five inputs. Then we go to the structure. For the structure, for example, for ANN, the 371 you see there is implying the number of inputs, the number of hidden layer neurons, and the number of outputs, which is one, the BOD. And for ANPIS, the tri 3 there is representing the type of membership function. In this case, we use triangular membership function, and the number of membership function is the 3 there. While the RBF is the radial basis function we use for the tuning in parameter for SBR construction. For MLR, 3 and 1 means the number of inputs are 3 and the number of outputs 1. Then, next, we check the performance of the models. If we look through the performance, as I have said earlier, the value with highest RMLC implies the best result, and the lowest, no, value with higher R square implies the best result, and also the lower RMLC implies the best result. So, we can see that the values with higher R square and lower RMLC are in model 3. That means when we combine all the inputs together, we have five inputs. And as I have also said earlier, the combination of the inputs are based on the correlation to the uh, BOD. The best three we use as model one are more correlated to the BOD than the ones we use as model four and model five altogether. But we can see that despite having less correlation to the uh, to the BOD, their application or their addition to the model increase the performance of the models. And also among the applied models, if we check throughout the models here or throughout the, the results here, we can see that the ANN and PIS and SBR provided better results than MLR. Likewise, ANPIS has the best performance compared to the all models applied. Now we move to the result of the data pre-process approach or the nonlinear ensemble model. From left, the model NLE1 implies the model developed, the nonlinear model developed using the, comb the first combination, the first group of the single models, of M1 model. While the M1, M2, M3 there is representing the combination. As I have said in our objective, we will also determine like the, uh, the effect of the ensemble models on the output. 
So this is how we determine that using two inputs, using three inputs, and using four inputs as well. And if we look at the results also, the structure is same as the one explained before. And if we look at the results also, we will see an improvement in performance across the across whole modeling there. And we can see as well, model three provided the best result, followed by model two, and then lastly, model one. To compare the performance of these models with that of the single models, we employ Taylor diagrams. And Taylor diagram has advantage of combining multiple models to determine the best performance among the models. Here, the performance criteria we use are correlation coefficient and also the standard deviation. The correlation, though, it's got, what I am seeing is like not much visible, but there is a straight line there from the origin up to the outer cap there. So that is the correlation. And also, the cap that is inside there is representing standard deviation. We can see our actual value is uh, exactly on the standard deviation. So the model that has performance close to that of the standard deviation or that of the actual model has the best performance. Likewise, for the correlation, the model with higher correlation has the best performance. So if we check, also similar to the results we already see, we can see that also the MLR, SBR, ANN, and AMPIS are now less, have less performance than the a proposed non-linear ensemble model we apply. We can see AMPIS also has better performance than the rest of the models, it's even close to the non-linear ensemble model we applied there. And we can see based on, uh, based on standard deviation, the MLE1 M2 is more close to the actual value or more close to the standard deviation than the rest of the models, which could be uh, uh, this M2 means we have the three inputs there for the M2, the output of ANN, the output of AMPIS, and the output of SBR. And when we added the output of uh, MLR there, it dropped back. It goes further away from the model we obtained from that of model 2, the performance we obtained from model 2 there. And this could be because the data may be more non-linear in nature, and MLR, instead of having good performance, then it will propagate the data to the next, uh, pro, uh, to the next uh, model. So that makes, or that reduces the performance of the model. But based on correlation coefficient, we can see that also the NLE1 M3 has higher performance than all the models applied. If we go for the next, it's also similar, but in this case, MPs is closer to the uh, NLE models there.